If you didn't install Bifrost during the initial Maya installation, you could go to this website, pick your version of operating system and which version of Maya you're using and download the installer. Once that installer installs, go under Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager. Do a search for Bifrost and click this to load the plugin and this one to always load the plugin. To start using Bifrost after you loaded the plugin, switch from modeling to FX and now you'll see the Bifrost fluids menu. This is going to go over how to use Bifrost. This is just a setup for a scene that will be slightly more advanced. Go to the animation settings and click on that icon and bring up playback speed. When you're previewing an animation, you probably have it set to 24 frames per second with most simulations in Maya set to playback to every frame. I'm selecting this cube and this cube will drop a glop of liquid and a little later we'll change this to a continuous stream of liquid. With this container selected under the FX area, go to Bifrost Fluids and then select Liquid. You might see red messages, you could ignore them. This is the cache building and we'll wait for a moment. I'm going to frame one. If I hit play, we'll see a glob and that glob will just continue downward few things. We want this glob to detect this container and want to be able to control this glob. Not only that, we want to be able to render this liquid from any frame after the simulation has been cached. This first step is very important. Selecting the Bifrost liquid one, or you could just click here on the container, going to the third tab in, and select Scratch Cache. This means after the simulation has been cached, we'll be able to move to any frame and then click render to preview what's going on. Without that, you always have to start back at frame one and let the whole simulation play forward as you render. That's not gonna be very efficient. So there's all the frames and I can hardly see anything. Let's get some stuff happening here. With the liquid container still selected, Go to the fourth tab and under resolution, set the resolution to 0.05. Doing this, you'll be able to see the liquid a lot better than before. In order for this liquid to know about this object or any object to glide with, we have to add it to the system. You do that by selecting the Bifrost Liquid 1 in the outliner or by clicking it out here in the viewport that bounding box, shift click on the object that you want to add to the system and be detected as a collider. Go under FX, Bifrost Fluids, and select Collider. Go back to the beginning of the animation, frame one, and then press play. As you may experience, putting things into cache takes a while. To make your caching shorter, select the range Going from frame one, instead of frame 120, I'm going to frame 40. And this is going to reset the range slider to frame 40. Now I have less to cache just to see if I'm getting everything correct. If you had a problem with the cache, you can select the Bifrost liquid container, going to the third tab in, and you could uncheck scratch cache and recheck it again. That's going to reload everything into cache. And you wait for it to happen, and then you can play your simulation. Now that's cached, I can scrub the timeline and see the results. And I could pick a frame, and I could render at that frame, something you wouldn't be able to do unless your simulation was cached. There's the liquid action. I'm going to add a sphere to the scene, drag it, put it right up here, going back to frame one, select the Bifrost liquid container, shift click on the sphere, I want to add the sphere as a collider, 
going under FX, Bifrost Fluids, Collider. Going back to frame one, pressing play. Now that the cache is done, I'm going to stop it. And at any point, we can scrub the timeline, and maybe this would be the moment of interest. Since it's in cache, we could just move the camera around and click render. Let's take a look at another property of this. To make this Bifrost a continuous stream, go in the outliner and select Bifrost emitter props. Go under the second tab, emitter props, and check continuous emission. Then play the simulation just to get into cache. And once, once it's in cache, you can scrub the timeline and preview your creation. I'm just going to add an HDR eye map to the scene. This will show the stream of liquid a little better. Selecting the sky dome light. Picking an HDR eye image. And now I'll re-render this image with the HDR eye map behind it. Now it's easier to see the continuous flow of liquid with an HDRI map. Next, I'm going to change the viscosity of this liquid, making it thicker. Going to Bifrost Liquid Properties, scrolling down until you see viscosity. Right now it's set to zero. I'm going to set that up to 200. Let the cache rerun and then try the simulation again. Unlike before, it takes a little longer for this liquid to get down because liquid's sticking to itself. And when it comes over the sphere, instead of splashing, it's kind of oozing over it, much like a syrup. With the Bifrost Liquid 1 container selected, going to the AI standard surface material for the container, under presets, I'm going to select Honey and use Replace. Now I'm going to render the frame again. 